Hello everybody, if you've been playing AFK Journey the same amount that I have been, you were probably a little bit addicted, but also maybe stumped on certain parts, and are probably curious about what are good teams, early game teams, and just maybe some general tips for help clearing when it comes to content that comes to this game, or when it comes to AFK Journey, and I am here to talk about... Oh. And I am here to talk about the team that I've been using or a couple of the teams that I've been using in order to clear out content. Again, fairly straightforwardly or without too, too much hassle. Now, mind you, uh, the, the myth or the kind of uh, illusion that you can kind of clear through the game with any team composition uh, is kind of just there. In other words, uh, there it, it is kind of just a myth is what I should say or how I should rephrase it. There is no one size fits all team in most cases. There are characters that are obviously really good, but in certain scenarios, even the best of characters need to get changed out a little bit because certain characters are very strong because they're AOE or they're single target or they do poisons, CCs, etc. But then there are just some bosses that are resistant to some of these effects or they, they need you to stay alive or they need you to clear more mobs at once. So let's just kind of get into it. So the first character that I think is kind of the one of the few characters or I guess one of the few characters I believe is kind of always going to be in any of your team compositions, at least early on, is going to be Rowan. Now Rowan is definitely one of the most OP characters that I've ever seen. Number one, because he enables more of your uh, ultimate casts, but you also have Cecia, who, if you didn't realize, is a DPS, like a super high giga DPS, while also being kind of like a pseudo tank because she's uh, she summons Mr. Car uh, Mr. Carlisle. But then, as you can see with the AFK auto battling in the background, although I am definitely, you know, I basically woke up and started autoing because otherwise, you know, I I couldn't progress. Uh, a lot of the teams that I have right now are going to change based on again the kind of content that. I guess the AFK stages produce or pose against me. Now, something you'll own, you'll also notice too is that I'm doing the AFK stages primarily because I'm kind of locked out of what I want to complete when it comes to the story. Uh, currently in the story, it's asking me to hit resonance level 60, and I'm not able to hit that yet. Uh, however, what I am going to be doing uh, to kind of increase my AFK progression or to get more rewards, of course, is progress my AFK stage uh, trials or the. Uh, endless abyss tower if you will uh, of the afk stages now again if you've noticed uh, i also have been using vala who i think assuming that the enemy bosses can be stunned is extremely extremely valuable and personally i'm kind of like a big vala guy i just really like vala you don't have to super invest in her but i decided to pull for her and in pulling for her and getting the 99 cent bundle i apologize i apologize for super pay to win super pay to win uh, I decided to get Vala, and in doing so, I got an extra copy of Rowan. Uh, I do think that if you randomly somehow manage to get imprints for Cecia, she is an absolute powerhouse. Uh, but that isn't to say that you can't get really good value out of characters like Odie, who, if we just pause here and I don't do this stage real quick and I kind of show you, uh, Odie is one of these characters that is absolutely bonkers. Now, what I mean by bonkers is not that he's got some usage or that he's okay. I mean, this character is your lord god and savior when it comes to especially doing something like uh the world boss equivalent the dream arena the the dream boss kill uh now if if you didn't watch my last video what i basically mentioned was that having a permanent poison debuff on an enemy or a boss is really op and lo and behold it of course actually paid out and is actually the truth now if you guys aren't familiar again with the content that is kind of a bit more challenging it's this dream realm and it's kind of this never-ending ladder that you can kind of, uh, I guess, focus or get or, you know, place high in so that you can get uh, rewards. One of the things that I think is really cool is that, again, you gain a cape for seven days in its time-limited fashion. I will say as, you know, just as a side note, I think it's extremely interesting and very, very cool that AFK Arena gives you limited, you know, even if it's limited, it's, it's cosmetics, uh, or cosmetic rewards that kind of make you feel a little bit more immersed in terms of your character and the customization. It feels like you're a little bit more invested in what you're doing as a character or what your character has and what they, or how they look, I guess. Uh, and that is, of course, not even talking about the fact that you also gain a title, which is really cool. It's very sparkly. These are kind of cosmetics or visuals that a lot of people find very appealing or very interesting because they're collector's items, uh, especially if you are... Like, not talking about, oh, well, I've got, like, this best-looking character or whatever. A lot of people can portfolio characters, assuming that they just have, you know, 
basically the time to pull or they you know they play the game a little bit more efficiently but in order to get something like a dream monarch like you have to be kind of aware of the different kinds of team compositions that do well uh and so the point of this all is to basically address how a character like Odie, although he is not obviously the most op character ever in terms of like you know just being a and i think he's like a what is he an elite character he's not even like an epic character he's got so much value and he's super super insane and the other character that i kind of want to give a big shout out to is actually muriel uh, if you guys have noticed there's a couple stages or there's a couple challenges that are located around the map that um, involve you doing like a solo challenge where you have to figure out what like the best composition or what the best uh strategy is to beat uh like a certain challenge and it's all with one character and ultimately i found that muriel uh because she has her her phoenix and her like throwing out like the fire is absolutely ridiculous not only because it's an initial hit of an aoe it also leaves fire behind and again that is absolutely insane value when it's you against like 11 mobs and again if you're just talking about like the the wall of flames and you have like the lava that comes down the damage ceiling on her is significant enough that Maybe you wouldn't use her for other content like progressing through the arena or anything. Although I definitely think she's usable, if not pretty decent. But I've definitely found that, especially for solo team, uh, for solo teaming, Muriel is just absolutely insane value. Now, the other character that I kind of want to give a special shout out to is Laika, because Laika, again, a lot of these characters are kind of slept on or underrated if you need an AoE. Uh, Laika is no different, and with Laika, she's got a big AoE that again, uh, it kind of hits a bunch of allies. Uh, number one that I guess, yeah, okay. So basically just, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have the, the reading incorrect. There's basically like a big AOE. And then after you throw out like the big AOE, it shoots down meters, which do a bunch of damage. Uh, if I'm not mistaken as well, yeah, she also increases the attack speed of all of your allies when you enter uh, or when you use her Empyrean Blessing. If I recall, oh, I might be thinking of another character. There's another character that gives you attack speed at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the game. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. It's this character. I apologize. I was getting Laika and uh, and another uh, another grass character or like another wind character mixed up. But this is a, a really, really high value character, especially because most characters or most people have access to Laika early. Don't sleep on this character. And then, of course, in terms of like knights and stuff or in terms of tanks, I definitely want to give a special shout out, of course, to Lucius. Now, if to be clear, he's not the most insane tank at all. That title would go to Thorin, if you're not familiar with Thorin, by the way. He's like the 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 undead knight who is extremely, extremely tanky. It is really hard to deal with him. But Lucius is still really decent, especially if you are like an early uh, an early player or if you're trying to be a little bit more efficient because they give you him early. Uh, however, the barriers along with, again, Rowan's healing or like his Rowan's utility is really crazy, but should you for some, you know, by some magical act of God, uh, you know, gain access to Hewan, if you have Lucius and Hewan, it is really, really, really difficult to die in this game. Uh, now, obviously, if you're finding something that is just like 20 to 30 levels above you, then I don't know what to tell you. Nothing's going to save you. However, uh, pairing the two is really nice for progression. Although you do have to keep in mind that sometimes if you do have the two of them together, uh, you may miss out on certain damage checks for certain bosses. Uh, an interesting an, or another interesting aspect about AFK Journey that adds to the strategy or like the, the thinking of the game or the complexity of the game is that you can't just throw five knights and just pray that you heal for like all of eternity. You do have a bit of a timer, so you have to beat certain stages like certain ways and you have to mix and match and adjust the way that your characters work which is kind of annoying if you're a gacha game or if you're a game where you have to love you know you have to level up 100 characters 20 30 40 characters and you have to get all of their awakenings and stuff but thankfully because of hands of resonance you don't actually have to worry about this uh if you want to try out a different character or a different composition a different uh, you know a different combination of team to beat a stage all you got to do is just wow, I'm gonna, I don't need another knight this fight, or I don't need, you know, I want a, a different knight, well, th there you go, we just, we just solved it, all we did was literally, you see that, I'll do it again for you, wow, we, we switched the, we switched the team composition, didn't cost gold, didn't cost anything ridiculous, and we can try a different composition in case if you're stuck, in any case though, guys, uh, that's kind of my initial, like, starting team that I think is really strong, again, if you have access to Cecia, which everyone should, because you get the 10 pull, definitely include her, uh, Lucius is definitely a must-have as well, especially because the kind of only all like alternative that you have to a decent knight early is Chippy, and 
Well, it's chippy. So I would say Cecia, um, Lucius, Rowan, if you uh, get to your 30 pull, which is inevitably where you get uh, Rowan, is really good as well. But your final two are kind of what you have to flex around and you kind of have to play around with. Uh, again, if you want AoE, I think Lyca is really good if you want to use her. Uh, but again, if you have or if you have any interest in pulling for Vala, I definitely think that Vala is very, very good. She's a high single target DPS that also disables characters, does a lot of damage. Uh, she is a little bit evasive too because she like bounces around depending on if characters are close to her or she can switch through modes or depending on where you put her, uh, she's really good. And of course, if the enemy isn't, you know, uh, quite stunnable, I would maybe replace a character like Laika or Vala with someone like Odie and then kind of move along from there. Like as you get other characters, you can kind of assess things. But these were the characters that I found to be not only good because I have them, but kind of the characters that I found to work for some of the other people in my community that are in my community that all have also been playing it. But uh, anyways, guys, long story short, uh, take the single target DPS when you need it. Uh, otherwise, take AOE. Keep yourself with the healer and the tank, especially early on, because it's really hard to kind of just power through things without a healer. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something or I hope you enjoyed. Uh, at the very minimum, uh, thank you again for everyone that's been supporting the content. I appreciate it. This game is actually a lot more fun than I thought I would, <laughs> than I thought it would be. Uh, they added a lot of changes or maybe not a lot of changes, but I guess like I have now found more things to do in the game currently as opposed to during the beta, which I think is pretty cool. There's the world boss, there's arena, there's dream arena, there's a load of different things. It feels like I could play this game 24 seven and I would not be done uh, up until like certain, you know, breaks in the story where, you know, you're kind of just locked. But even then that's kind of your sign to go do PVP, the draft mode arena, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you, uh, again, enjoy this video, learn something, but I will see you on the next one. Make sure to check out the rest of my socials. Good night. Adios.